Hi everyone, welcome to the Contributors channel where you can learn how to start and grow your business and how to make money. My name is Viktor Gichan and today we're going to reveal the biggest kept secret of many master marketers. Stay tuned because here we're talking about how can a small business stand out and what is the secret weapon of the world's smartest marketers. Also, we're looking into details at the value add incentives and how to use them to beat the competition. Please welcome my dear guest, the founder of marketingboost.com, Captain Marco Torres. Hi, Marka. Thank you for coming on the Contributors channel. Thank you for having me, Victor. Pleasure to be here. Well, what I learned from your bio, you have been an entrepreneur since the age of nine, when you started your first business as a paper boy. By the age of 12, you already got the biggest paper route in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and was featured on the front page of the local newspaper for your accomplishment. What inspired you to become an entrepreneur at the age when kids watch cartoons? <laughs> when most kids were watching cartoons, I was getting up at six in the morning or five in the morning to go deliver papers. And, and, and it's really broad, it was my dad. I mean, my father taught me the value of earning a dollar very early on. I, he rarely gave me anything for nothing. I had to earn everything, you know, even around the house, if you wanted to, I wanted a Schwinn bicycle at the time, you know, the 10 speed bicycle. And he was like, well, what are you gonna do to earn it? You know, I'm not, you've got to, you know, chores around the house or this, that, and the other. And I could earn a few dollars a week for doing, taking out the trash and doing that, but it wasn't enough. And so he suggested, well, you can do a paper route. At your age, you can start a business called, you know, running a paper route. And so he kind of guided me along the way to do uh, what I needed to do to get a paper route, including, you know, contacting the paper company and set, getting myself set up. But I didn't know I was going to enjoy it as much as I did. And, the, and I ended up leveraging early on, I leveraged relationships. I found that what I was good at was knocking on doors to sell the subscription. And back then we had to also go back and collect the money. So my dad taught me what spreadsheets and putting down who owes me how much and when I got to go back to collect it. You know, back then the spreadsheets were by hand. We didn't have computers and we didn't have internet. Nobody could pay their bill online like they do today. So we had to go back and knock on the door and say, hey, you owe me some money. I ended up leveraging my getting my friends to help me to deliver the papers so that I could focus on, you know, door knocking and selling subscriptions and collecting the money. And anyway, it turned out to be a, a very big route that I ended up eventually selling so I could focus on playing football and went on to play football. And then by the time I was 23 years old, I owned five restaurants and a nightclub. So I've been an entrepreneur for, you know, one way or another for much of my life. <laughs> Just wow, Marco, such an amazing story. Nine year age, you already have employees and you collecting money and <laughs> doing accounting and bookkeeping. Yeah. This is just incredible. I think it's a real inspiration for any little boy who dreams to become someone. So let's go further to your adults here. In the late 1990s and early 2000s, you brought a nearly $1 billion for a travel company. I think it's a great achievement to my mind. It's not easy. One billion dollars. It's a big number. So yeah. how did you do it? And what was the secret of your success? Well, I got early on, I was introduced to, you know, my, my, one of my mentors was like in 1994 saying the, the future is the internet. We've got to be on the internet. You know, so I started figuring, learning everything I could about the internet. And back then it was, you know, it was, well, it was a well, well West, but it was also, you had to learn coding. You had to learn HTML coding. You had to build a website. You had to figure out, you know, there was a whole lot to figure out. There was none of the tools that are available today. There's never been a better time to be a home, an entrepreneur today, a solopreneur, or however you want to word it. There's so many amazing tools, so affordable. You know, the website can be built in a couple of hours. You, you can set up your automation today with email, texting, voicemail, broadcast, so much, you know, amazing technology with CRM. None of that existed back in my day. But I got involved in teaching myself internet marketing since the mid 90s. So about, I was an early entrepreneur for, for the internet. I was a mass email marketer back then. It was one of the easiest ways to, everybody had an AOL account and they loved getting email. You know, back then you'd get your, your computer would go, you've got mail and people loved that, you know, to go check their email address. And so I was a spammer before they called it spam. But <laughs> <laughs> 
And, and I really used email with this company. I remember I went in and I pitched this big company. I went in and met with the owner of this multi-billion dollar company. And I said, look, I can make you, I, I promised him I'll get you $200 million a year off of the internet within a short period of time. And I, I, I convinced, I sold my way in to be a quasi employee business relationship deal where I had a salary and the opportunity to revenue share in all the revenue I generated from the internet. I sold them on a concept that we were going to do online unlike he, he had been trying there the, thus far. And so we ended up building a huge machine to generate leads online. And it was a lot of it driven with back then it was pay-per-click was huge in the early days before Google. I mean, Google came around as well, but before Google, it was uh, Overture and Ask Jeeves and Yahoo. And then eventually pay-per-click on Google came in. We were heavy marketers on pay-per-click advertising on Google and email marketing and uh, lead generation with uh, all sorts of stuff. And literally we generated, a, you know, I had a four call centers working. Back then, people, all the call to action was always call in. Nobody wanted to buy anything on the internet back then. People were afraid to put their credit cards into some computer and who knows where your credit card information went. Yeah, and they liked back then, they still liked talking to people. You know, so they wanted to talk to a human being about this product or service they were going to buy. And so we set up the call centers. And before you know it, I had four call centers, 2,000 telemarketers around in four different cities in the country. And we were feeding that machine with leads and inbound phone calls and outbound telemarketing and with from the leads and the follow-up. And it was a, a lot of fun. I built a, a huge machine. Uh, team, creative guys, tech teams. That's the other lesson here, uh, Victor, is I always learned to surround myself with people smarter than me and, and, and have people on my team that could, you know, were great designers, copywriters, tech techie guys, you know, there's only so much I could do, but I could bring on experts that would help me figure out the, the whole process back then. Yeah, when I had the business in, in Russia as well, and it was like you just described, no tools, no Wix, no WordPress, nothing like that. Everything from scratch, you write a code, you upload through FTP. So Marco, I heard that uh, you and your partners have revolutionized the in incentives industry. So you invented like value add incentives and allow small businesses to stand out from the crowd and compete with the big boys. Would you tell our viewers a little bit more details what is exactly was invented and what result have you guys achieved? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So what, because we got, I got back into the travel space um, after 2008, I was with that big corporate giant that I was, the, and so we ended up getting our own, starting our own travel business in around 2010, myself and some, some partners of mine, we got together. We were building a very fast, another very fast growing travel company of our own. And that was moving along very well, but then we kept, we wanted, we had a dream if we could only get video reviews from more clients, if we could get video testimonials, and if we kept thinking, imagine if we had more video testimonials than any other travel site out there, we would be able to leverage that into, into thousands of additional sales. But we were like, what could we do to motivate people to go that extra mile of giving us a video review from their hotel or destination? So we came up with an idea. Let's offer them a bonus vacation. Let's offer them a bonus trip a three night stay in their choice of Orlando or Las Vegas if they would film a selfie video for us from the hotels around the world that we were selling. So here's what we did. And by the way, this is a lesson that everybody could still implement today in whatever business you're in. We started doing a survey when we expected people to be at the peak of their happiness. So whatever product or service you sell, there should be a time when you kind of expect, but at this point, they should be thrilled with the product or service. That's when you want to send them an email email and a text message asking them, hey, would you rate us on a scale of one to five? How are we doing? And we would do this after check-in. Right after check-in, we'd be saying, hey, by now you've checked into the hotel. How is the hotel living up to your expectations? And how has our service been so far? And if they gave us back a four or five out of five, we would send them another e email and text message immediately saying, great, we are thrilled that you're enjoying the hotel. You're having a good time. Would you do us a huge favor and help us spread the word about this hotel? Uh, uh, film, a, if you would go the extra mile, of filming a selfie video from the pool, the beach, the, the bar, whatever you like best, brag about their hotel brand and about our brand, we're going to reward you with a complimentary hotel stay on us three nights in your choice of Orlando or Las Vegas. And then that took off. 
And before you know it, we had hundreds and then thousands of these video reviews coming in. Today, we have over 30,000 video testimonials from more travelers, more, more than any other site in the world. So we accomplished that goal. And we were leveraging those into thousands of additional sales. I mean, we generated over a million travelers from that one travel site. So now, of course, all these free hotel stays we were promising, people were raising their hands saying, hey, okay, we want our free trip now. How do we get our free trip to Orlando or Vegas? So now we were having to pay out of our pocket for those free rooms we were giving away. And that was like, ouch, this is getting expensive. Now what do we do? <laughs> right, this is exactly my idea. Right? Like, so how do you make money out of it? Right, so this is getting expensive. So how do we give these free trips away now? So because we were a high volume travel company, we went back to our hotel partners in Orlando and Las Vegas. And we said, look, you've got a problem and we know we can help solve it. The problem you have is we, your hotel is not full year round. Let's be honest. You, you're full on certain weekends. You're full for peak season, holidays, special events, 4th of July, Christmas, New Year's. But the majority of the year, 70% of the year or more, at least 30% of your rooms, if not more, are going empty. And they agreed. And we said, we can help put warm bodies in those rooms, couples, families, individuals. They're going to spend money at the restaurant, the bar, the casino, the spa. They're going to spend money at the excursion desk, the gift shop. They're going to book additional nights. They're going to book additional rooms to bring friends, etc. They said, well, we'll try it. We agree. So we got a couple of hotels to participate in Orlando and Las Vegas. And now we were able to fulfill those free trips we were giving away without costing us money. And then we thought, man, this is working amazingly. Can you imagine if we had hundreds of destinations? And that is what became eventually marketingboost.com today, where we now offer complimentary hotel stays. It's a subscription model. So we reinvented the travel the incentive business. We're not the first guys on the block to be in the travel uh, incentive business, but our competitors do it totally different. So we we make it one, incredibly affordable for any Marketing Boost member, because it's only, it's a very affordable subscription fee. It gives you the ability to give away an unlimited amount of complimentary hotel stays over 125 destinations around the world. Three night stays in places like Orlando, Las Vegas, I mentioned earlier, Gatlinburg, Branson, New York City, San Diego, 30 US destinations, then five night stays in places like Cancun, Mexico, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo San Lucas, Punta Cana, five night stays in Hawaii, seven night stays in places like Phuket, Thailand, and Bali. We have uh, destinations all over Europe and Paris and Canary Islands and Germany. We have destinations all over Australia, Caribbean. And so today we are, uh, our service is good, you know, uh, offered worldwide. We have Asia, Asian destinations, Singapore and India and many others. And then we also offer complimentary hotels stays. These come in, I mean, I'm sorry, we offer uh, hotel savings cards. These come in uh, uh, increments of, they're like a hotel savings card voucher, increments of $100, 2 3 and $500, and restaurant savings vouchers that are good in the United States and Canada. Now, these three categories of incentives as a Marketing Boost member, you can use to, as you were mentioning earlier, you can use these incentives to add to whatever your call to action is to create value and to stand out from the crowd and to create scarcity and urgency so that people take action with you today versus thinking about it and taking action next week, next month, or not at all. So, yeah, so what I, Victor, if you'll let me, I'd love to give an example that people can relate to of how incentives work for some of the biggest companies in the world. This is amazing. Yeah, so you found a way how you can use someone's empty spaces because any hotel has 30% at least over the year, which is nobody right. staying there. And you just help them and you grow business over it. That's yeah, and there's, there's there's no hoops to jump through, no timeshare presentations right. for your client to listen right. to. You know. There's no obligation. Yeah, it's very hard to sell timeshare because people understand they kind of need to commit for this and pay every year. Yeah, and here and you get our program, it's, it's, it's easy. So let, let, but let me talk about incentives that everybody's going to relate to. Amazon, This is they don't use Marketing Boost, but I'm trying to give you an example of how the big boys do it and how with Marketing Boost, you can do something similar. Amazon created, got, they eventually, you know, Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men in the world, created, he managed to find a way to get almost all of us shopping on Amazon all the time. He created Amazon Prime. And when he first launched this, video streaming wasn't even that popular yet. 
And the incentive was you get free shipping. When you buy into Amazon Prime and you pay $97 a year or whatever it was, you get free shipping. So we bought the Amazon Prime. We didn't even know that, that included free videos. We wanted the free shipping. That was the incentive. And then, of course, you found out, oh, cool, I get to watch movies, videos, streaming, and what have you. But more important was the free shipping. And then, of course, once we bought into that, then what? We were automatically a loyal comp a client because when you were going to buy anything on the Internet, you'd be like, well, let me see if Amazon has it because I got free shipping with Amazon. So instead of buying it from Macy's or Sears or whatever, you know, you were buying it from Amazon because you got free shipping. So he managed to, like, capture us as loyal clients around the world. And we ended up getting the videos to go with it. But let's talk about another one. McDonald's, they have that adult Happy Meal. And so the, the Happy Meal is the, the prize for the kids. They get the toy in hamburger, soda, fruit basket, and a little toy. So mom and dads are choosing McDonald's over Burger King or whatever because they're going to be able to, you know, get the kid the Happy Meal with the toy and they're going to entertain themselves over there so mom and dad can actually talk to each other. Something they've been doing for years, generating billions of dollars with the, so with the Happy Meal. So my question to you is, do you have an adult Happy Meal with your company, your product? Do you have the Amazon you know, free shipping incentive. And if not, that's what Marketing Boost can do for you because with our three categories of incentives, you can have something that helps you stand out from the crowd. You can offer these incentives with, and really it comes down to two ways of doing that. Either buy product and get the incentive to go with it or inquire about our product and get one of our incentives to go with it. So one of the biggest things that Marketing Boost members use is appointment setting. We're all using Zoom calls like crazy around where you can talk. It's an amazing technology. We can talk to people anywhere in the world and make our sales presentations. But now people book an appointment with you. And many of them don't show up. So you can use a Marketing Boost incentive, for example, to say, hey, book a no, a no obligation appointment and, uh, and I'm going to reward you with a $100 hotel sale card if you show up on time for the appointment we think your time is valuable and ours is as well so if you show up really? on, so you show up on can time, i use for my time. business your hotels yes really okay you got a client okay <laughs> <laughs> wow i thought that's, that's only for way. you it's guys a, yeah that's a so simple any way business can get partner with you people to show up on time for their zoom calls and then imagine what that does if it reduces your no-show rate for you or your sales team, you know you've got a winner because you've got more people on the calls, the more appointments you can make, the more... No, for yeah. us, for example, would be a good idea, for example, why clients say, why should I work with you? And I say, if you work with us, you can get for you and for your family three days vacation in Orlando, for example. And they say, okay, oh, here we are. Okay. And then I, say, I then give it to them, to you, right? And you guys provide them these things and you guys make money on them, but I got a client. Exactly. You're going to send them the incentive. You can automate that with our platform or you can send it you log into the platform and just send them the, and, the, and the incentive arrives via email and text message so they get it right away and then they can activate it and get it and then they'll have 18 months to select travel dates to to travel that's amazing guys yeah. Who watching this video right now so if you didn't get it so no matter in what business you are if you want to get incentives for your clients to either show up for the appointment or to do business with you this is, could be a big bonus for example when you get a client and you did do, have a deal you just want to show the token of appreciation you can just can send them this and they will go on a vacation they will looking forward to do more business with you again to go some other vacation exactly i've even had people use our incentives victor to uh, solve a customer service problem. So imagine you have a client that somebody on your team dropped the ball, you made a mistake, they're not happy with whatever it is, and they want to write negative reviews, or maybe they already wrote a negative review. You can reach out to them and say, look, we'd really like the opportunity to have hit the reset button. We want to ship you the new problem. We want to fix the problem. We want to get this right, yada, yada, yada. We're going to refund your money, whatever. But we also want to send you a complimentary hotel stay on us just for your aggravation that we acknowledge we dropped the ball. So we'd like to give you a three night stay in Las Vegas on us. You know, and then of course we recommend the disclosure. Disclosure, the disclaimer is the following. Airfare is not included, of course. Food and beverage is not included. And the government taxes and fees are not included either. But I'm gonna give you the hotel stay on us and you're responsible for getting there, of course, and paying the taxes. Now, if I gave you that and we fixed the problem, would you remove that negative review? Would you consider that? We and you could actually get people to remove a negative review about you and help control your online reputation by using an incentive as well. So I, I see a lot of application for this. This is like just maybe
magic okay guys you did a really great job i believe it can really help small businesses and not only small business any business i think businesses can stand out and beat the competition okay let's move on so by the way this is one of my favorite quotes of a famous businessman aristotle anasis the secret in business is knowing something nobody else knows i feel that you know a marketing secret so what is the secret weapon of the world's smartest marketers you refer to on your website well that's in a way i just dropped that secret a moment ago i covered it because oh I'm so this is what we just talked about yeah this is what i just talked about so the secret is access to marketing boost because it is, we only market, you know, B2B just to business owners. It gives you this ability to, to you know, your client, you're going to tell your client, I have, if as a, as a small business owner or a big one, I'm going to say, I have a special relationship with my travel partner, redeemvacations.com. So I can give you this complimentary hotel stay on me. Your secret is marketing boost. You're giving away the, the incentives but your client doesn't know that it only costs you $37 a month. So that's the little mastermind secret of many marketers. So we pay $37 a month like subscription and we have access to those locations to this offer. Yes, sir. Cool. Everyone knows we make a lot of mistakes on the way to success. What is your greatest failure story? What did you learn and how did you recover from it? Well, my biggest failure was having all of my eggs in one basket by the end of 2008, I was all wrapped around that company that I told you about that I built a huge machine, but it was all in one industry and in one in one area. So when the, when the crash of 2008 came about, I lost everything. I mean, it was, it was, well, actually I, I, I chose later to look at it another way, but I had a great sales year, one of the best sales years ever. I mean, I sold my house, I sold my cars, I sold my boat, I sold my motorcycle, I sold my furniture. I <laughs> <laughs> it was like a, it was like a disaster i was having to sell everything just like <laughs> holy schmuck because little by little the money was running out you know we're, i was trying to maintain a certain the same lifestyle and i thought my mistake was oh I'm, I'm gonna bounce i'm gonna move right to you know same level i'm gonna go from this position you know and stay in the similar shoot i could not find any kind of replacement income or salary or job or nothing and little by little you know the money was going and i was starting to sell stuff and you know seven cars in the driveway now i'm selling cars and it came down to having to start completely over and i literally had to move out of town to a different city i couldn't hold my head up high i was and i felt like a complete failure in my mid 40s losing everything and starting all over the one of the lessons that i learned there was i felt total you know victim i uh, i began to wonder is it because i'm because i'm latino because my last name is torres that i can't find another job and so to get over that victor i finally had to realize you know hey i live in the united states of america this is the land of opportunity this is where you, you can rebuild yourself you can reimagine yourself you can you can reinvent yourself over and over and i've done it multiple times in my life and i just had to realize mid 40s or not you got to re you know do it again get the victim mentality out of my head get the the winner back in you know start all over and so I moved out of the, my town that I was in Orlando, Florida. And I moved to, to Miami and said, I'm starting fresh, brand new. I know how to do, be successful. I know how to start over. I can do it. And so went to Miami and eventually built, you know, numerous new businesses and, and leveraged partnerships, leveraged relationships again, found the people that I used to do business with and were friends and, and found several guys who were in a similar all boat, you know, so we leveraged our, our capital, we leveraged our, our brain trust, and we built new businesses again and, and never turned back. Good. Good for you. Yeah. Back to your business experience. What are the top mistakes, like three mistakes small businesses should do with in marketing? What would you recommend? I think too many small businesses make the big mistake of trying to do everything themselves. You know, they're the solopreneur, entrepreneur wants to do it all. I mean, many of us have a kind of a control, a control freak attitude where, well, nobody can do it as good as I do. So you're writing the copy, you're building the website, you're doing the emails, you're doing the thing and you're, and you're trying to learn the new technologies and the softwares and, and you're trying to do it all. And that small mentality will keep you as a small business. So my suggestion to any business entrepreneur out there is everything you, anything you do, anything you do over and over every day, you need to turn it into a business process. 
and outsource it. And that's the other beauty of today's world. It's so easy to find quality people, experts smarter than you in whatever niche issue or, or challenge in your business that you can create a, a process for, and you can hire somebody to do it for you know affordable rates, whether it's somebody in your backyard or somebody on the other side of the world doing that for you. So that you can think, step back and look at your business from a, a every time you do this, you're gonna be able to look at your business from another level down and make better decisions about where to go next, where to pivot, where to turn, where to improve. You can grow a business. And if you're trying to do it all by yourself, you never, you know, you, you have to be willing to invest that money in hiring people to do what you do so that you can look at the business from another angle and, and grow the business. That's a great advice. Thank you. Thanks so much. So then now I hope the dear viewers, you know what you're not supposed to do if you want to grow your business. And lastly, a traditional question. What advice would you give to your younger self? I wish I could have told myself to buy Amazon stock, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would have told myself to diversify more have multiple business incomes, multiple passive incomes coming in because eventually whatever you're doing today more than likely will require changes and or will, you know, have things may happen to you and you wanna you don't want to be where I was in age 45 wiped out starting all over. So you want to grow if from if I had been you know early, and I always thought I'm an entrepreneur. I mean, I've owned restaurants. I had a nightclub at 23. I, I thought by the time I'm 35, I'll be a billionaire. Well, I never became a billionaire. I'm not yet. But the point is, you know, if I had earlier on thought, okay, I'm going to have multiple streams of income. I'm going to have real estate investments. I'm going to have this type of passive income here, passive income there. So that even if something drastic happened, like the 2008 crash of the entire economy, I would not have been so drastically affected. So that would be my lesson to teach everyone else is, you know, try to diversify have multiple streams of income so that if one or two fails, it's not the, it's not devastating. Absolutely. Totally agree. Thanks so much, Marco, for coming on the Contributor Show and share your insights and all your experience with our viewers. It was a really very interesting journey. Dear viewers, I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you want to learn more about value add incentives, or you want to participate, the link to marketingboost.com is in the description. If you like this video, please like and share, subscribe, and hit the bell below to be notified about my new videos. Thanks for watching. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, stay tuned.